Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us and for this special figure showcase and review we're going to be looking at one of my all-time favourite Generation 1 figures that is of course the Decepticon Shockwave so what we're going to do with this video, quite a few things actually if you'd like to see the differences or know how to spot the original between a KO in both the packaging and indeed the figure hang on because I'm going to show you how to do that but I want to also show you in detail him in both modes we're going to have a look at two different types of packaging including the very rare error boxed hasbro version behind and of course we can have a look at a couple of other shockwaves that would have been released down the generations toy line so let's start off with him in his gun mode and this is just you know it's just so good it's spectacular even obviously the feet wouldn't be out but that's just how i balance him to have him displayed on a shelf so you can fold these underneath these are in fact as i say die cast which you can see there and the gun itself is pretty big if you've got no idea how big the original generation one figure is um i've got close to hand i've got a deluxe new shrapnel figure from legacy evolution and you can see he doesn't even make his waist it's crazy how big this guy is and indeed i've got a legacy evolution prowl who's just about as big as the barrel so this is a really really big figure the color scheme on him works perfectly um this mold was previously uh before the transformer sorry it was pre-used as radio shack and another one i think it was toyco uh, so there is gray versions of this but of course the first transformers version was indeed this one um now there is a battery cover where you can put the batteries in inside here to be honest and the trigger for there works and presses what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a separate little video up with them working i'm lucky enough that one of these is working i think they both do to be honest uh, but i'll put that up at the end so you can see that working as well um there's also the viewfinder on the back which is perfect beautiful looking translucent plastic and there indeed is the on off switch from the gun itself so while we've got the loose figure in front of us the first and easy telltale sign to whether or not it's a ko would be these screws if you see these screws and they're silver then unfortunately it is a ko so in the versions that i've got loose and indeed the boxed both hasbro and takara you will see that all the screws are in fact this really well they're pretty much black to be fair uh, so that is something to be aware of other things to be aware of is the fact that this hose pretty much i think oh no i mean i mean look it's just starting to perish you can see at the top with it being rubber um it will perish that is the, probably the most common uh, thing to get broke apart from the electronics but to be damaged with this there is a trigger there as i say uh, but there's not much again not much more to say about the gun mode the only thing that i will point out is that if unfortunately you're buying it loose and you haven't got the barrel it just doesn't look the same so i don't think you're going to really be able to um to display it in the alternate mode without the barrel and the barrel just slots on over the top he says if i put it the wrong way around oh you see this is what i really hate about using the g1 figures in these videos what's happened there let's try again it's probably because they've just there we go that's it they just snapped out and of course i'm going to fold the feet back out just so i can display him right there in fact i'm going to leave that barrel there and i'll show you the barrel to the one that's in robot mode so the barrel's huge loads of molding detail on it it's lovely lovely translucent plastic um and let's have a look at the robot now this will probably surprise you because for well even pre-transformers even pre-generation one figure the articulation on this guy is huge now of course as i said the size is something crazy here he is next to new ages cyclops which is of course another version of him here he is next to the leader class version from the siege toy line with the feet well, with the huge shoes and the big backpack and he's still nowhere near as tall as him and here he is next to the more recent core class version as well so again massive massive generation one figure um one of the biggest to be fair and as i say one of the best not just because of his cool colors and his completely unique design but as you're about to see and again i'll show you the 
in a separate video, sorry, not in a separate video, in a separate part at the end with the sound effects and everything working. Now, there's a lot of die cast in here in the feet. This is something else to be aware of. See how he's sliding down? That's exactly why I've got him in robot mode to show you that. These springs, these here, they do have a tendency to unfortunately get heavily play worn. Now, there's a look, there's a knee bend on this, which is crazy. You can see the springs inside there. The arms will go out to the side. They'll, they'll move around. Uh, the bicep, they'll swivel underneath the shoulder. There's ratchets in everything. The beautiful translucent purple plastic is there. Um, and the hands, as I say, even spin around. The lovely detail on the head. These even move backwards and forwards. And you've got the gold in there. Mine's a little bit more dusty than I remembered it being, to be honest. Uh, the transformation process, I'm not going to do, unfortunately. I think I've done it in another review of this particular figure. Uh, main reason being, it's just so easy to damage these. Um, if I can find a KO, I will, of course, be doing it. Now I can't get it to stand. There we go. But I'm sure you can pretty much tell. Oh, if I put this here next to it, you can see that the legs squash up together to make the handle the arms fold up at the top to squish the head in and make the bat and then you clip the barrel at the front so it's not too difficult and again i am going to apologize but i'm sure that you'll understand the main reason for me not doing that and i can't get him to stand now at all i want to quickly show you some packaging though so this is how he was packaged in japan by takara totally different as you can see uh lovely different artwork there of him at the front his reference number was 49 which you can see at the bottom and at the top funnily enough the transformation process is there there's the gun legs come down arms come out battery pack folds up and stand him up um what i love about this i'm going to show you and in fact i'll show you now straight away Look at the artwork on the back of this. So it's a very familiar 1985 scene with the Dinobots. Um, but of course, with it being Japan, you've got... I've got to lift this up so you can see it. You've got Devastator added in there. Swoop, Bullet Swing. The infamous Red Tracks is still there. It's just a lovely, lovely piece of artwork. And of course, you've got the tech spec um, and details on the back. And that's pretty much the Takara box. Now this is something very special. Huge thank you to Tim Banerjee for sourcing this for me. But again, you'll see the screws, I suppose just to confirm what I was saying a second ago, the screws all black in there. Now I've not seen any fake or KO Takara boxes. So if you're looking for the KO version of the Hasbro box, you see this grid here, you can see how the gray is quite Quite predominant, to be fair, quite prominent, that's the word. You can see it through there, and then it, the sunburst fades. That's what you're looking for. The sunburst in the KOs is much, much brighter. Um, and as I've said, the screws are a huge, huge giveaway as well. What makes this box super special and super spare, uh, rare is the fact that this grey border here is supposed to continue and go under there. You see how it was an actual genuine printing error. It stopped just under there. All of this should be grey. So this basically confirms this is one of the first releases of this figure. I'm just going to spin it around for you. So you've got the same image on the side as you have the Takara one. And you've got the 1984 battle scene on the back of this. Because as I say, first release. Not even the 85 um artwork so very nice to see of course with the figures that were all known as diaclone beforehand and if we spin it around does that mean then that we've got yep it's a tm box so tm you see transformers trademark not even the r which you get to see on the rest of the boxes there you go i think that's enough to say on this particular figure hopefully i mean as i say you can tell how much i like him there is and i'll do i'm going to add at the end now just the sound effects that he makes so hold on for that i'm going to get some batteries pop him in and you'll get to see the noises and how he works 
So as promised here, they are working. I say they are working. Typically the one that's in the gun mode, only the lights are working. Whereas the one that's in robot mode, the sound is working, but I really don't want to transform them. And I hope that you obviously understand that. Now, here's something crazy. Here's something that most people might not even have seen. Anybody remember these old batteries? Well, this is the one that we have to pop in here and this would fit really snugly inside there but obviously i'm not going to push it all the way in however i can still get it to work from the outside so i'm just going to very quickly connect this up uh most people as i say under 25 maybe will never have seen one of these batteries so this connects this way around and as i say all i would do is you just slot that in there neatly um, and cover it back up so oh it is working now perfect it's awful isn't it so there's the one sound this is what, then the reason why I didn't do it last night, and you can all laugh, is because all my kids were in bed. So that's why it's separately at the end. And there's the other one. So you can see just how bright and indeed how loud and annoying it is. So there's the first one. And then there's the other one. But what I will quickly show you while I've got it here, and I pretty much guarantee one of my kids will come running upstairs in a minute saying, What's that? Um, I'm going to show you in the robot mode as well because I think it looks just as impressive um, in the robot mode because obviously he's got the translucent hands. So I've took the battery cover off this ready. I'm going to connect it up exactly the same. Um, and of course, as I say, the battery would sit in the back like so. Let's rest that there. And then you could pull the trigger that's in the rather awkward position of being right there. And oh, I just covered it up completely. There you go. There he is. A fully working, incredibly loud Generation 1 Shockwave figure. So, hope you enjoyed looking at him. I'm going to be doing loads more Generation 1 showcases now the room's pretty much sorted. As well, of course, all the new figures that I'm getting at the same time. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Take care.